When starting Sea of Thieves, a lot of players' first goal is to become a pirate legend. Some people take hours, days, months, and even years to become one. But luckily for you, I love speedrunning this game to the point where your average Facebook gamer will accuse me of using Alliance servers. For the last few months, my crew and I have been talking about becoming the fastest pirate legend. The current fastest pirate legend is held by LD Silver, Car E3, and DB racing to the finish line in an insane 6 hours, 28 minutes, and 48 seconds. That. That means we still... beat it by a minute. When I released the video Pirate Legend in 6 hours, Sumo and I completed this on a double gold and XP weekend all while on a sloop. So we had a lot to work on to take the top spot from LD and his crew. Let's talk about the rules, because no matter what you speedrun, there are certain rules in which you must abide by so your run remains valid. The timer starts when you create your first pirate. The timer ends when the player finishes the conversation with the mysterious stranger and accepts the shanty of legends. You are not allowed any help from the outside of your own crew, so no raising the alliance flag or joining an alliance. Even time-limited bonus events like double XP aren't allowed. Lastly, all runs must be recorded in full, players' point of views must be submitted to speedrun.com, and some poor soul has to sit and watch every point of view in full to validate and ensure all players follow the rules and don't do anything sketchy during the run. I'm looking at you, Travada. And now for the strategy. With the current world record being held on a brigantine, we decided to give this speedrun a go on a galleon. The crew will consist of Deivor and Sumo, both of which were part of my crew when we broke the world record for the fastest Ashen wins. For our fourth player, we roped in our friend Sentinel, who absolutely loves completing Fort of the Damned over and over and over again. And that's just what we needed. In Sea of Thieves, a basic strategy will only take you so far, as this game is so random, literally anything can happen. You might not even see an enemy ship for the entire duration of a run. You could sink to a skelly ship or even a sweaty crew to come in and steal all your hard-earned loot. But hey, that's just how Sea of Thieves works. To help us develop our strategy, between the four of us, we created a total of 28 Pirate Legend accounts, all of which were reset every time just so we could improve on our gold-gaining master plan. With burning through all of these accounts, it was time to reset them for the last time and finally attempt a world record run. With our pirates created, it was time to set sail and begin our journey. Our first event was a skeleton fleet. This was an important start because this event gives a great amount of shared loot across all three factions. Not only that, it gives us some ritual skulls that we'll need to start the Fort of the Damned later in the run. When we approached the fleet, we could see a sloop had triggered the event, meaning that the event will now scale down to that of one or two players. As we were a galleon, this could possibly cause less galley ships to spawn, leading to a lower amount of loot for our run. After the sloop had been dealt with, we could finish the fleet, and because it had scaled down to a sloop, at this point we only had one skelly sloop and one galley left. We're so fucking good at this game. Good job guys, good job, I'm proud of you. Alright, let's get this loot up and get out of here. Yeah, this is actually a pretty weak start, if you can harpoon everything. With our first event complete, it was time for the crew to start playing smarter. We had to start completing different events all at the same time. Located south of Reaper's Hideout is the Treasury of the Lost Ancients, so we decided to send Sumo on a rowboat adventure. When you approach the Treasury, you'll see a glow. Just swim down and start clearing waves. Back above ground, we heard a sweet, sweet sound in the form of a Ford of Fortune. <gasps> Off! Uh, it's Sealer's Knot, southwest. Turning, turning. You got a fourth? Yeah. Yeah. Job, boys. While Sumo was at a treasury, Sentinel picked up another rowboat and was on his way to the Fort of the Damned. With completing the Skeleton Fleet event, we acquired a few Ritual Skulls which will allow Sentinel to start the Fort of the Damned. Normally, you would have to get all the lights for this event, but sometimes with new servers, all the lights can be pre-lit, and we weren't complaining at all. After Sentinel arrived at the Fort of the Damned, a Skelly Galley spawned just outside Crook's Hollow. So armed with some kegs from the fort, he went on a mission to sink the Galleon. Luckily for us, this skelly ship could have another ritual skull on board, which is a big bonus for us. All he had to do was collect all of the loot in a rowboat, go back to Fort of the Damned, and start earning us some loot. So with Sumo at a treasury, Sentinel at Fort of the Damned, Deivor and I decided to sail the galleon over to Sailor's Nut Stronghold, where the Fort of Fortune had just spawned. While speedrunning Pirate Legend, Fofs have a great amount of loot for the Gold Hoarders, with the Chest of Fortune being a large amount of reputation. With the Fort of Fortune near completion, I found a rowboat and took myself over to the Shrine of Ocean's Fortune. 
The three treasuries in Sea of Thieves are a wave-based event similar to that of a fort, whereas shrines, you must complete a series of puzzles to make it all the way to the end and find your treasure reward. So at this moment in time, we had Sentinel working at a Fort of the Damned, Sumo was finishing up his treasury, Dave was at a Fort of Fortune, and I was plugging away at a shrine. Needless to say, we were earning a lot of loot and progressing at a good speed towards a new Pirate Legend record. After being split up for some time, we had to regroup at the Fort of the Damned. Our Fort of the Damned strategy was now in full swing. With every completion of this event, you need to relight all of the lanterns and place another skull to trigger the event. With the lights being one of the most important parts, the galleon had to stay at the island so Sentinel and Sumo could churn out Fort of the Dams over and over again. With the boat being in a fixed position, it was up to Deavor and I to continue world events on a stupid rowboat. For this event, one of the most important things is to not die. Since the boat was at the Fort of the Damned, we could respawn back at that location, which of course would slow down the fort completion. The next thing that would slow us down is an enemy ship. Just when we thought our run was going super smooth, a sloop decided they wanted to play a Sea of Thieves. Oh, Dave, uh, north, 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 sloop coming into the Skull Fort. Go to the towers, go to the towers. Wild Rose Seals, Wild Rose Seals. Mask going down, I've been sniped. Healing. I hit him. He's shooting me. He's smart. Killed, killed someone. One's dead. One's right, dude, one's I'm going threat. for the lunge, okay? Yeah. Start blasting, dude. Anchor's going down. Uh, it's a it's a spawn ship. Fresh spawn, fresh spawn. Get more cannons real quick. Right, that's one dead. One dead. Oh, the other's boarded. Oh. And he died there. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, all dead, all dead. Quick, quick, quick. I have some cannonballs. You go over to the boat and then I'll cannon them from the tower. I will, I will. Right, I'm coming over. Two dead. Nice. Oh, I'm just going to bucket them here. Oh, we spawned. They've sunk. And he's dead. GG. Nice one. When attempting a pirate legend run, one huge thing we have to avoid is PvP. Not that we're afraid of it, but just because this is a PvE speedrun attempt, we needed to avoid PvP at all costs. Not only could it slow down the attempt, but we could potentially lose our entire loot haul. With the Fort of the Dam crew finishing their third run, it was time to collect all the loot from the fort and head to Plunder Outpost. The crew had two goals while we were here. Sentinel had to buy and complete Skull Stash Voyages since we needed more Ritual Skulls for the Fort of the Damned, while Sumo and Deavor sold enough loot to hit level 15 in all three factions. I, on the other hand, opted in for another rowboat adventure, making my way down to the Shrine of Ancient Tears. Let's get back to talking about strategy. The faction with the highest amount of XP needed to hit level 50 is Merchants, then Order of Souls, and lastly Gold Hoarder. Believe me, we learnt a lot when creating and purging 28 Pirate Legend accounts. So with Merchants needing the most XP, we chose to fly that Emissary Flag first and work it all the way to Grade 5. When you sell items to any faction, you sell an item at a base value of 1 times multiplier. On top of that, getting that faction's emissary flag to grade 5 will give you a bonus of a 1.5 times multiplier, totaling an overall multiplier of 2.5. So using an emissary flag to level up faster is definitely the way. Now let's talk about selling loot. When using a new account, you obviously don't have a captain ship, which means selling to sovereigns is off limits. The most popular strategy for speedrunning pirate legends is loot stacking. You stack for a long time, raise an emissary flag, get to level 50 in that faction, then fly the flag of another faction. By the time we achieve level 50 in merchants, we will swap our flag over to the Order of Souls. And by this stage, we will already have a large amount of Order of Souls loot on our boat. This method is only really used for speedruns, but you as a normal player could of course save up enough money and buy a captain ship. We could sell everything, leave game, buy a captain ship and sail on that, but the kicker here is starting from scratch with no loot. Hence why nearly all pirate legend runs don't or can't use sovereigns. But if the game ever changes and a strategy can include selling its sovereigns, then this will of course change. So yeah, loot stacking is important. For now, we're going to sell like brand new players. <laughs> 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 
He's got a mega kick! Right side! Get him, get him, get him! Come back here, you little shit! He's downstairs! Oh! I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it! I suppose some contacts might actually help here. After the guys threw up the merchant emissary flag, it was time to head back to the Fort of the Damned. I had just finished at the Shrine of Ancient Tears, so I made my way back to the ship. As we got closer, a sloop was hidden in the fog at the Fort of the Damned, which was the reason Sentinel, Devor, and Sumo couldn't see it while at plunder. So far, there were three Fort of the Damned stacked on the island. With a ton of loot and way too many kegs, we started to wonder just how much loot they had stole from us. Yeah, they have everything that I thought they would. Mars down. Mars is down. I need more holes. Right, everybody light them up, light them up. While Sentinel was sinking the sloop and also getting the dirtiest backtrack known to man, we had an unwanted visitor on board using our own kegs against us. He's got a mega keg! Right side! Get him, get him, get him! Come back here, you little shit! He's downstairs! Oh! I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it! With the sloop out of the way, it was time to get our heads back in the game and continue our run. With our merchant emissary flag raised, we can once again leave Sentinel all alone at the Fort of the Damned, while we sailed over to our second skeleton fleet event. So far into this run, we had pretty good RNG when it came to world events, and a skeleton fleet was going to secure us more ritual skulls. With the fleet event complete, we had just hit Merchant Emissary Grade 5, which means we can start selling all of our merchant loot that we had stacked. At this point, you might be wondering, what's the purpose of all these Fort of the Dams? Each completion gives you a large amount of mega kegs along with ancient bone dust. These two items are among some of the highest value merchant loot in the game, so grinding this event over and over would clear a huge amount of merchant levels for us. With the very high risk of all our mega kegs exploding, one thing I did in intervals was sell all the kegs we had. With all our merchants sold and levels locked in, it was time to move on to our next event. While Sentinel was still soloing the Fort of the Damned, we sailed down to Lost Gold Fort to speedrun our way to more treasure. After securing all the loot, I took a rowboat down to the Shrine of Tribute. I packed all the loot I could see inside a mermaid and swam back up to shore. Taking the mermaid would have respawned me back in our boat, and as Davor and Sumo were on their way back to the Fort of the Damned, that wouldn't have been the smartest idea. So I had to swim to the surface, pop the loot pinata mermaid, and row all the way back to the rest of the crew. Now with a few more Fort of the Dams completed, it was finally time to hit level 50 merchants. Merchant has been the largest bulk of our grind. We've sold a huge amount of mega kegs, bone dust, and so much more merchant loot that we've acquired from all the world events. Not only that, but we have a substantial amount of Order of Souls and Gold Hoarder loot on board. With the current world record being close to six and a half hours, we were making insane progress to taking the number one spot from LD. With all the merchant loot sold, we had hit level 49. Each month, Lorena, the NPC at all outposts, can sell you a letter of recommendation. This is buying one full level, which of course is allowed in the rules. So buying one level will tip us over to Merchants level 50, meaning it's time to lower our Merchant flag and swap over to the Order of Souls. With the next flag raised, it was all hands on deck to speedrun the Fort of the Damned. By this stage, there was quite a few stacked already. This event is not only good for Merchants, but it's great for the Order of Souls. Each vault contains Stronghold Skulls and Gems, which are both fantastic amount of XP. And because we've been stacking, we had a ton of them. The next strategy in play here was of course our Order of Souls flag. Every time you complete an event, carry loot, and even place it back on your boat, you can progress your flag all the way to Grade 5. Our big brain play here was that all the Fort of the Dam loot hadn't touched the boat yet. Once we harpooned it all, it gave us an instant Grade 5 flag. And with everything on board, it was time to get level 50 in the Order of Souls. With gems being individual items and the fact that we had over a hundred gems and skulls, we needed to think a little smarter. So we loaded all single items inside a rowboat and pushed it all the way to the Order of Souls tent. The next thing you have to do here is use blunder bombs to destroy the rowboat. Once it disappears, all of the loot will drop in front of the tent, making it easier for us to sell. Now all we had to do is just sell all this loot and hope for the best. When selling the loot, we sold the lowest valued items first, then highest value items last. This was because we had more gems than we needed, so any extra items were put back on the boat so we could sell with the gold hoarders. You see, min-maxing at its finest. Once we finished selling, we finally hit level 49 Order of Souls. Now just a quick stop to Lorena to buy the remaining level. We were now in the final stretch of our Pirate Legend run.
With flipping the flag over to Gold Hoarders, we were now on our way. At a little over four hours in, we were two and a half hours away from the current world record. And all we had to do was get Gold Hoarder to level 50. Just like our previous strat with Order of Souls, we were going to place the remainder of the Fort of the Damned loot on our ship. But sadly, it wasn't enough to carry us to Grade 5. Roaming around the Fort of the Damned, we seen two skelly ships, so we dropped sail and headed straight for them. Right as we left Sentinel, a Meg spawned on us. And just like I mentioned before, killing this Meg will progress our Emissary Grade so we had to stop to defeat it. While we were killing the Meg, Sumo shot out to do a battle quest at Castaway Isle. Luckily for us, he secured a chest of rage and a chest of sorrow, which was incredible news that finally got us to grade 5 gold order. This was it. All we needed was loot. While hitting grade 5 off these two chests, we decided to risk it all and ignore the skelly ship, A Sentinel was just about to complete the last Fort of the Damned of the day. So with our grade 5 flag, over 4 hours of gold hoarder loot stacked, a buttload of gems and an extra fort of the damned, it was time to collect everything we had and get to plunder outpost as fast as we could. At this point the hype was real, but at the same time we were also super nervous as we were taking a big risk sailing the plunder, not knowing if we had enough loot to hit level 50. Then the Sea of Thieves God sent us some good luck in the form of a skelly sloop that was weirdly enough heading in the same direction as we were. With us against the clock, we had to sink this ship quicker than you could reset a pirate and rocket our way to Plunder Outpost. It was almost over, and without being able to sell the Sovereigns, running loot back and forth was really a nerve killer. Go, go, go! Drop everything! Go, go, right, go, 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 everybody off, everybody go, go, off, go, go, go. off the boat, off, 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 off. <laughs> I need to sell faster. It is close. It is very close. Oh, it's so close. Hey, man, you stuck. 48. <laughs> sell, 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 sell. Sell, boys. I'm going to check again. I'm just going to keep selling. I'm not going to 49, 49. Sam, go, 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 go. I got to buy two things. I got to go here, then I got to go order souls, then back there. Keep selling, keep selling, keep selling, because we could bump him to 50 naturally without back when you're buying the last order souls level. Come on, give me. All right, we're all done. Everything sold. That's it, yeah. You ready for the timer? Timer is currently 453.20. Cool, 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 cool. And. Done. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. With accepting the shanty of legends, it was unbelievable news to our ears. Not only did we create a new world record, but we completely smashed it by completing our Pirate Legends speedrun in 4 hours, 53 minutes and 40 seconds, beating the previous world record by 1 hour and 34 minutes. With all our points of view submitted to speedrun.com, validated and approved, we officially held the new world record and we were super proud of what we had just achieved. Weeks of grinding, working on multiple strategies between chaining world events, understanding loot value, resetting pirates over and over again. All our hard work had just paid off. I really hope you've enjoyed this story and somewhat of a look into what's actually involved in speedrunning this game. And for anyone that would like to watch the POVs in full, I'll leave links to those in the description. And with the end of the video, I'd like to shed some light on our crewmate, Davor. In September of last year, we all received the unfortunate news that one of our best friends and crewmate, Davor, had sadly passed away. This news crippled everyone around him. A son, a brother, a friend and a crewmate was taken from us way too early. Dave was a massive part of the UK brand that I had created. He created all the thumbnails for the channel, helping write videos, record videos, appearing in some fantastic videos by Absolute Pixel. Dave, yes. The final question of round one. All to play for. You currently have zero points. Mm -hmm. And even being the creator of the original tool gun in the widely popular game, Gary's Mod. Not only was Dave a huge part of our lives, he was a massive part of the Sea of Thieves community. I've held off editing this video for quite some time because Dave was a huge part of it. So, I'm dedicating this video to our lost crewmate, Dave, the fastest pirate legend in the world. <laughs>